Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, June 19th. Over the next few days, we'll have some breezy winds over southern areas of the Great Basin. These winds will generally be in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range with relative humidity between 10 and 15 percent. So dry and breezy over southern areas, but not quite as windy as what we saw earlier this week. The main change will be moisture moving up from the southwest, and we will see showers and thunderstorms start to move into the Arizona Strip and eastern Utah starting on Thursday. These thunderstorms will be a mix of wet and dry initially. However, by later on Thursday into Friday, we'll see quite a bit wetter thunderstorms over the eastern side of Utah. On the fringes on the west side, we will see a mix of wet and dry storms and a little bit less moisture and lightning, but for the most part, wetter storms will occur over the eastern side of the state. We'll also have some breezy and dry conditions up over southern Idaho. Fuels aren't quite critical up north yet. However, grasses are very dry and we are getting some fires to exhibit some growth up there. So with an increase in winds and dry conditions, we could see some fire spread if we see starts in that area. Precipitation over the last 24 hours, generally light precipitation up in central Idaho with a few thunderstorms. We did have that very strong cold front move through, so we did have some new snowfall up in the higher elevations up north as well. Yesterday, we had 12 fires for 517 acres reported with 183 acres of growth on our large fire. Here is the picture here on the right. You can see the yellow and, or and red circles indicating our wildfires. The red are the most recent. We did have a new large fire up in central Idaho, again in the lower elevations. And then we still have the, our large fire, the Little Twist, down in Utah. Over the last 7 to 14 days, just some spotty precipitation up over northern areas with very dry conditions over western Nevada, down into southern Nevada, southern Utah, and the Arizona Strip. Currently, ERCs are continuing to be elevated over southern and eastern areas, although we did see a brief reprieve with this cold front that moved through with cooler temperatures. We still have very dry conditions, so ERCs probably only leveled out and really won't fluctuate down much, but they will be on the upward trend with warmer and drier conditions as we go through the end of the week and into next week. Here's a couple of our current ERC charts down near the Little Twist Fire. ERCs are above normal and above the 90th percentile. And you can see from the green forecast line, they will be meandering around before dropping somewhat with that moisture moving in as we move towards Thursday and Friday. Over into Western Nevada, we are seeing those ERCs continue to rise and we will be approaching maximums potentially in the next seven days with hot and dry conditions, uh, definitely well above normal and approaching that 80th percentile on the charts. Our satellite image from this morning shows a trough of low pressure along the west coast. So out ahead of this trough is where we'll see those breezy winds across parts of southern and central areas of the Great Basin. And we will see that moisture moving up into the Great Basin from the southwest as we go into tomorrow. Looking at our picture, you can see again that trough later today and that moisture into New Mexico, but that will be tracking westward. No high risk on the map today for our seven day significant fire potential. However, we obviously continue with those drier conditions with moderate fire potential in the south and east and over western Nevada. Relative humidity will remain low today and dropping up north after our cold front move through. So we will see single digits to teens in most areas of Nevada and Utah and teens up into Idaho. And you can see from the wind gusts on the right, generally just breezy conditions over southern areas, but again, most of those gusts below 25 miles per hour. Temperatures today will be on the rise. We'll see a return of 80s over much of Nevada and Utah and up into southern Idaho and 60s for the higher elevations. And then again, generally dry conditions today. As we move into Thursday, this is where the moisture starts to push into southeast Utah, still with that troughing along the west coast to keep our breezy winds. So we will have some modifications to our significant fire potential forecast, a little bit of a drop over parts of the eastern Arizona Strip into eastern Utah. You can see our relative humidity in the southeast corner of Utah is where those relative humidities really start to come up, but still remain relatively dry further west. And our wind gusts, most of the wind gusts over eastern Utah are associated with outflow boundaries with thunderstorms. So given the shift from dry conditions to a return of moisture, we could see some of those gusty outflow winds. Otherwise, wind gusts generally around 25 miles per hour over southern Nevada into southwest Utah could see some gusts around 30 miles per hour, but fairly marginal with respect to high risk. On Thursday, temperatures continue to climb. We'll see a return of low 90s for temperatures in the valleys of Nevada and Utah and 105 for Las Vegas, and even up into the upper 80s or low 90s up in southern Idaho. 
You can see the probability of precipitation. Most of that precipitation will be in southeast Utah, but some spotty moisture on the western fringe for a mix of wet and dry thunderstorms. So as we move into Friday, moisture remains over the eastern side of the Great Basin. So we will see quite a bit wetter conditions going into Friday, Thursday or going into Friday with these thunderstorms with increased moisture, more wetter storms over eastern Utah. So again, a decline in our significant fire potential for that area, but fire potential still remains low to moderate further west. And you can obviously see a significant increase in relative humidity, even for our large fire on the Fish Lake. So we will see many areas above 20%. Drier conditions still remain off to the west. And winds overall will decrease. The only concerns in Utah will be with those outflow winds, with those thunderstorms. But as moisture increases, those stronger outflow winds become a little bit less likely. Also on Friday, we will see some breezy and dry conditions up north in Idaho in the Snake River Plain. So you can see relative humidity around 15% and those gusts between about uh, 20 and 25 miles per hour or so. Temperatures continue to rise over western areas of the Great Basin on Friday with mid 90s and they will see a drop over eastern areas with that moisture and you can obviously see a good chance of wetting rains in many areas of eastern Utah. Three day precipitation, again, wetter conditions over the east. Some of these areas are showing over three quarters of an inch or possibly even over an inch of total precipitation near the Colorado border. So definitely wet conditions. As you go further west, these wetting rains definitely will decrease and on the fringes just be some light precipitation. As we move into Saturday, we will see some of the ridging start to return. So we will start to lose some of this moisture, but still probably enough in Utah for some scattered showers or thunderstorms. So still keeping low fire potential in the east. That drier air starts to work a little bit further east Sunday and into Monday. So we will start to see our eastern areas drying out for a return of some areas in yellow over eastern Utah for significant fire potential, but continued drying and probably accelerated drying with the hot temperatures where temperatures will remain about 10 degrees above normal going through the weekend and into early next week. And similar conditions on Tuesday, more dry, hotter conditions region wide. Our seven day total precipitation, no different from the three days since all of that precipitation will fall within the next few days. And then the eight to 14 day outlook taking us from the end of June into the first few days of July, showing warmer and drier conditions for much of the Great Basin. A lot of this moisture really remaining into the, su the Southwest, but will start to creep its way into Southern areas of the Great Basin sometime during that first week in July. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.